This is the Manta Ray from Northrop Grumman, a revolutionary submarine that has achieved the impossible. As global threats intensify daily, the U.S. Navy has urgently needed an autonomous wanderer vehicle capable of executing the most dangerous missions without detection. For years, this elusive, groundbreaking machine was a mere dream, until now. The Manta Ray, with its unprecedented capabilities, is set to redefine naval warfare. Recent media reports have unveiled that the U.S. Navy just completed testing on a super-secret autonomous submarine nicknamed the Manta Ray. This vessel, designed and built by Northrop Grumman, is a state-of-the-art platform created to solve an age-old problem. After years of research and development, the Manta Ray completed its first operational test off the coast of California this spring. But what is it? Due to the highly classified nature of the program, few details are known publicly about what exactly the Manta Ray is and what it's capable of doing. What is known publicly is that the Manta Ray concept is meant for a fully autonomous underwater vessel that doesn't need any human either on board or controlling it. Instead, once launched, the Manta Ray conducts its mission and reports back. In order to be as efficient as possible, the Manta Ray is designed to be modular and its components fit inside five shipping containers. Reports suggest that this is to save energy for longer transits where the Manta Ray can be moved by truck instead of under its own power. Once on site, the Manta Ray can then be assembled with standard tools and a crane. The Navy has yet to say what type of ship can launch the Manta Ray, and it is not known how it would be deployed. However, perhaps the large mission bay of a littoral combat ship or an amphibious ship's well deck could launch the craft. Once in the water, the Manta Ray's mission has not been disclosed. However, it can be inferred based on what has been said publicly. According to media reports, the Manta Ray can conduct a variety of reconnaissance and surveillance missions. These missions could be as simple as taking photos and videos of enemy coastlines, tapping into underwater cables, or be as advanced as sneaking into enemy ports to collect intelligence on combatant navies. Whatever the case may be, the Manta Ray has been categorically described as a surveillance vessel. So far, there have not been any mentions of arming the vessel. In addition to just theories on its use, there is little else that can be inferred from publicly released photographs. One such example is the size of the Manta Ray. In photos released by the U.S. Navy, a 7-meter rigid hull inflatable boat follows close behind the craft. By using a very rough estimate, it's clear the wingspan of the manta ray is around 20 meters, with the length being about 14 meters. Released images also purposefully obscure the back of the aircraft. This is common in public release images when sensitive equipment is being used or carried on that part of an asset. Because of this, the manta ray can likely tow some type of array, likely a sonar array or potentially a communication suite behind it. Having such a capability would be a first for a UUV. The U.S. Navy has desired for decades to have a fully autonomous submarine. This is because, though U.S. submariners are highly trained and their equipment is the best in the world, in combat there will be losses no matter how good a Navy trains. Because of this, in a real-world fight where the U.S. would be going up against a peer like Russia or China, losing a single submarine is much more than just the loss of a several-billion-dollar asset. The years of intense training and schooling every enlisted and officer submariner goes through are invaluable, and losing a large number of submarines during a war could cripple the submarine service since new crews cannot be made overnight. Due to these concerns, the Navy has desired to create fully autonomous submarines to augment the fleet and carry out some of the most dangerous missions. For example, laying mines in enemy waters, sneaking into occupied ports, and tapping into underwater cables are among the most risky operations a submarine can do. To mitigate this risk to multi-billion dollar submarines and their irreplaceable crews, the Navy has wanted to make something to take on this risk. But what was the solution to this problem? This is where Echo Voyager steps in. The brainchild of Boeing, this underwater vehicle is the grandfather of the manta ray. Perhaps the most important reason why to take a look at the Echo Voyager is to see what these vessels are capable of and how they work. Because this technology is coming on two decades old, 
there's a lot more information about it that has been released to the public. Coming in at around 72 feet long, 8.5 feet wide, and 8.5 feet tall, the Echo Voyager is about three times as large as the Manta Ray. With a weight of around 50 tons, it is heavier too. But how does it work? According to press releases from Boeing, the Echo Voyager has a range of 6,500 nautical miles on one fuel module. Undoubtedly, the Echo Voyager, and by extension the Manta Ray or any other UUV for that matter, are powered by a revolutionary submarine propulsion system known as Air Independent Propulsion or AIP. Let me explain what it is. Traditional submarines are powered by electric batteries that get their power from the energy produced by diesel generators. However, one cannot run a diesel generator in an enclosed space since the toxic exhaust will kill everyone on board if left on long enough. Because of this, diesel submarines have to surface often to snorkel depth in order to charge their electric batteries by running their diesel engines. Of course, this platform, since coming to the surface, exposes submarines to enemy fire from ships, aircraft, and shore batteries. AIP solves this problem. Though there are various methods of doing this, including bioethanol fuels and liquid oxygen, these fuel cells allow the submarine to charge its batteries underwater. To save on these precious fuel cells, a submarine can charge its batteries normally with a diesel engine when there's no danger and stay submerged with fuel cells while on a mission. However, AIP has traditionally been very heavy, which is why the Echo Voyager weighs 50 tons. If naval scientists and defense contractors were able to miniaturize AIP onto the manta ray, this would be a truly groundbreaking development in the history of naval warfare. But now that we talked about how the Echo Voyager, and by extension the manta ray, propels itself, how does it work in the water? Once submerged in the water, the craft can go up to 8 knots, but must maintain at least 3. It can also travel up to 150 nautical miles in between charges for its diesel engine. The craft can also dive to a breathtaking depth of 11,000 feet, compared to the 3,000 feet depth the US Los Angeles-class submarine can dive. But how does the Echo Voyager figure out where it is in the world? At such a deep depth, traditional GPS systems do not work to tell the Echo Voyager where it is at that depth. Instead, the Echo Voyager relies on an inertial navigation system that essentially dead reckons the craft using its current course and speed based on the last time it got a GPX fix near the water. In addition to the inertial navigation system, the Echo Voyager also has Doppler velocity logs, whose sole purpose is to send out signals into the surrounding water and wait for a return to measure the craft's speed. When the Echo Voyager is near the ocean floor, it can use a similar version of terrain contour matching utilized by Tomahawk missiles to guide it. Lastly, the Echo Voyager is equipped with forward-looking sonar to help it avoid running into sea mounts or underwater mountains. But how does the Echo Voyager stay stable? Thanks to its automatic buoyancy control ability, the Echo Voyager can keep itself at its desired depth by filling or emptying its own ballast tanks. And to keep it upright and not tipped over due to ocean currents, the craft can adjust its own trim forward and aft to keep the vessel on a steady course. All told, these features can keep the Echo Voyager within one foot of its desired depth and 7.7 .7 feet within its desired location anywhere in the ocean up to 11,000 feet deep. Though the exact mission of the Echo Voyager remains classified, there are many options on board. With a 14-foot-long internal payload bay that can carry up to 8 tons of equipment, the Echo Voyager can carry out deep-sea intelligence gathering missions and, with its capability to moor on the seabed, tap into underwater cables. However, it is known that the Echo Voyager has not been armed. That is until the Orca came onto the scene. Designed by Boeing and named after one of nature's apex predators, the Orca is another UUV that the Navy is testing to bring about a new era in undersea warfare. The next generation of the Echo Voyager, the Orca, is about 13 feet longer at 85 feet and has dimensions and weight similar to the Echo Voyager since it was a direct descendant of it. 
While the Orca certainly has a lot of the same technology as the Echo Voyager and Manta Ray, what makes the Orca different is that it is armed. Though the Navy has remained tight-lipped about its exact capabilities, the Orca has been confirmed to be the Navy's armed underwater drone. Public hearings before Congress have suggested the Navy wants the Orca to assume all the combat duties of a traditional submarine, including firing torpedoes and laying mines. Additionally, the Orca has some previously unknown but developing technologies to find and defuse underwater mines to clear sea lanes for ships and submarines. Besides this public discourse, little else is known about the Orca other than that the Navy wants it to eventually assume dangerous combat duties. But what does this all mean for the future? Though the concept itself has come a long way, the Navy is still years away from unleashing these hordes of hellacious sea creatures on unsuspecting enemies. The most recent announcement noted that the Manta Ray only completed its initial underwater testing to prove it can actually drive itself and not just sink when put into the water. Additionally, Boeing just delivered the first operational prototype of the Orca to the Navy in December 2023. However, although a fully automated robot submarine will not be sinking enemy fleets anytime soon, the capability is certainly there, and it will be a game-changer for the U.S. once these prototypes become operational. Bye for now.